you know, this is a good story. Uh, story about hope, story about redemption. Uh, and um, I think we'll be able to, to play off of it. Uh, Roy in particular, I think, has, has been able to identify uh, what's most important uh, about the story and tell the tale. I'm always um, impressed with the commitment and the effort that actors put into trying to at least simulate what fighters do and, and how fighters live. And I don't know, Roy, it looks to me like Jake has uh, worked as hard at this as, as almost anybody ever. Yeah, you have to give both guys a lot of credit for their effort because you can tell that they didn't just go out and say, okay, we'll do a little bit. No, they put real effort into them because, they, because they're keeping their feet right. They're throwing punches pretty correctly. They're doing a lot of things that the normal eye wouldn't understand, but I do understand. So they have done a tremendous job of preparing themselves to deliver the audience as close to reality as they could. Well, it's abundantly clear that Antoine's a boxing fan. Uh, and obviously he's been following the sport a long time and he knows what he wants to, uh, what he wants to deliver here in terms of a narrative for the audience, but he's also uh, flexible enough and egoless enough that if, you know, a true genius of the sport like Roy says to him, Antoine, it ought to be this way, he's going to turn it around and make it that way. And, uh, you know, we've already had a couple of instances where Roy was able to point out they should do this and move their hands this way and stuff like that, and Antoine uh, is responding to that. So it's fun. We get to, we get to give a little input uh, from our perspective uh, to a really great director who's going to make a heck of a movie. And a great director like that, you know, when he can, like he said, humble himself to allow the experts to do what the experts do. This guy's as expert as it gets when it comes to commentating. I mean, you have to love and want to appreciate this guy because you appreciate the fact that he knows that he's doing his job. But for him to reach the top level of his job, he has to also allow the guys that do that for a living to do their job. And he does. So it's like you couldn't ask for a better scenario to me. We have a script, but this dude is so amazing at just doing it as he sees it, which is why I love working with him, because I don't have to give you something red or something that somebody gave me to say. No, I just feed off what he says. He's going to call exactly what's happening. He's going to make it to where you can understand what it is. And if he knows that there may be a problem or maybe a dark, a gray area for you to understand it, he'll give me a question to make me explain it to you. That's how brilliant and intelligent this guy is. And we just hope that the writers are going to say, that's good enough, I wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of life lessons in boxing. Most of them come from the brawler standing point of view. You might get knocked down, but you know, although you get knocked down, you got to get up and keep fighting. A brawler's point of view. A boxer very rarely gets knocked down because he ain't going to get hit that much. Look at Floyd Mayweather. You never see him in a situation where he said, if you get knocked down, you got to get up and keep going even harder than you were before you get knocked down. But with Billy, you'll see that. With Arturo Gatti, you saw that. he go down from a body shot, get up in the next round, he knocked the other guy down. That's, right, the, that, that's the life days. story. That's what makes boxing so intriguing. So closely related to actual life. Yeah, there's an old phrase, live fast, die young, leave a beautiful corpse. That describes the career of that kind of fighter. Jack Dempsey, Joe Frazier, Mike Tyson, those careers tend to be short bursts of white hot flame. And, uh, and that's what Billy Hope is.